Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. You know what's wrong with health and fitness? You weaponize it against yourself. Why didn't you go to the gym today? You're so lazy. Ah, why did you eat that? You have no self-control. Stop it. At Beachbody, we think training and caring for your body in a way that works best for you should be about loving yourself. Let us help you without all the judgment. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. The world is always on, but you shouldn't be. Put Joe Sleep to bed. During Mattress Firm's Labor Day sale, get a king for the price of a queen or a queen for a twin and save up to $700 on ceiling. Talk to a sleep expert and unjunk your sleep today. Mattress Firm. You ready to talk about some spoopy shit? Not spoopy. Spoopy. I don't know why you're like so, what's the word, freaked out <laughs> by mediumship information. I mean, I can only be a psychic medium. Doesn't mean I can't be scared by my own farts. Caroline and the Ghost Graveyard video podcast literally made fun of me for that. So, you know. You got to wait five seconds for the audio. Are we good, Mom? <laughs> okay, bye. Hello and welcome to Metapsychics, a metaphysical spiritual comedy podcast about everything spoopy and cool that you'll ever want to know hosted by myself my name's Liv this is M M say hi <sighs> and we're psychic medium twin flames business partners and uh, really bad at quoting Spongebob for basically every life scenario possible and uh, we're meta do you see the comments about people stating you know the content is okay but what really did it for me was the Spongebob quotes <laughs> Because literally during the most scary part, we're like, it's the dumb ray from Spongebob. <laughs> That's how you deal with being very uncomfortable and about to poop your pants. It's also how you deal with it when you're millennial and you're brainwashed by Harry Potter and Spongebob. Avatar. That's another one we like to use. Jimmy yeah, Neutron. but most people aren't brainwashed by Avatar. Maybe they're brainwashed by Spongebob. <laughs> okay. I promise. If you scream a quote out into a crowd... They're more likely to know about a SpongeBob quote instead of an Avatar one. I literally had a met an actual physical metaphysical shower thought today because while I was yes no while I was in the shower <laughs> honestly honest to God cross my heart and hope to die stick a needle in my right. eye stop on your right foot don't forget it pelvic thrust woo it's a good time anyways um, <laughs> I just scared him <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you I'm sorry you didn't scare me okay good. And you looked alarmed. Itself. Oh, okay, got it. All right, <laughs> you got to yell the other direction to get the effect with the microphones. So in the shower, I had a metaphysical shower thought about memes because on our Discord server for Patreon, also guys, tangent ADHD. This we have a thing about this and how it like ADHD neurodivergence goes into mediumship. So just deal with the tangent for a second because today we're going to be talking about reincarnation. If that's your jam, stick around. But I'm going to tell you about my metaphysical actual shower thought, which was in the Discord server for Patreon. We have a section for memes and no one got my meme because my meme about astrology, because I'm not an astrologist, was wrong because it wasn't about Mercury, it was actually about Saturn and no one actually laughed about my water boy meme that I put in there and I'm very sad about it. So I was thinking about what type of meme I can put in the Discord server under the meme section that would be hilarious. And I need to go onto the internet, learn how to do Photoshop and make a meme for us where it is just the, the freeze frame from SpongeBob when Plankton finally gets the Krabby Patty secret formula and they're like, well, what are you going to do with it? And he's like, I don't know. I didn't think I'd get this far. That's how I feel about our business. What do you mean? <laughs> I have an entire set of plans that I have put under evil plans in my computer. I know exactly what's happening. You just didn't get the memo. And I need everyone that's listening to understand that in this situation, as twin flame psychic mediums and business extraordinaires, professionals. You're like, I don't know what to do with my hands. And I'm over here like, you're not doing the right thing with your hands. I'm Plankton and you're his computer wife. Yeah. What is her <laughs> name? 
Karen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Plankton. You are Karen. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I'm SpongeBob. I'm SpongeBob. I'm Squidward. 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 I went halfway through it. Just join in. It's just Squidward, not SpongeBob. I know. I got rid of it. I, I, I messed it up. I'm sorry. Why can't you just go along with it? Now everyone's going to laugh at me. Because I'm your computer wife. <sighs> <laughs> They're going to laugh at me. If I stick my feet in my mouth, you have to say, no, 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 I was fine. In case you were wondering, if you relate to this in any way, shape, or form as the computer wife of Plankton, that is what a Virgo is. <laughs> a Virgo is your computer wife, <laughs> mm. aka me. So today we're going to be talking about reincarnation, and I'm really fucking stoked about it. Cause in the entire time, she's going to be like, I can't believe it! And I'm like, you're a medium. Doesn't this happen to you a lot? <laughs> if you're new to the podcast, we like to talk about science. And you have to say it that way. If you don't do it, you're not allowed. You have to get the secret handshake right before you're allowed in the clubhouse. Anyways, so... I went to school for science. M has a very scientific brain and went to school for art. And so I'm your computer wife. Yes. And I love science. I'm a hippie, basically. They like the proper term for what I would diagnose my uh, like what is it hyperfixation on is naturalism. That's what diagnose. Was, yeah. Diagnose what? My my uh, my fuel and energy for life is for things within the naturalist. I don't know, segment of science. Science. But also, uh -huh. I like neuroscience, and I don't think that's naturalism either. But anyways, whatever. <laughs> Curiosity. So we're going to talk about reincarnation today, and I got excited about science because this is the only other topic that Em and I have covered in however many episodes we have of this podcast and other YouTube videos, too, where I have an actual scientific citation as a source. And it just fuels me with, with happiness. If you want to know, we talked about the Akashic Records. That's the very first thing or topic that we covered where I had someone actually write their thesis dissertation on the Akashic Records, which is baller, 100%. But today, we are going to basically have a general overview synopsis of Dr. Jim Tucker's rebuttal to a slam, I guess, of his original work that he submitted into a scientific journal um this guy named michael shutter Suter. hang on let me look it's funny there's a lot of s's in it and d's well there's one d but there's or one s but there's a lot of d's his name is michael suddath and michael suddath decided to get cheeky with dr jim tucker who is the director of perceptual studies at the university of virginia school of medicine and dr tucker was like you can't criticize me because the dumb ray is the only music you listen to and here's why and then he literally gave a scientific clap back on why this guy is wrong about him being wrong and that he's actually right and it just oh makes me so happy i literally put science t in all capitals with two exclamation points and then put ooh girl get him because oh reading this was just beautiful and if you want to read <clears throat> dr tucker's actual public publication of what I'm about to give a general overview with quotes from him because I can't just summarize some of the things in the way that he said it because it was too well put and it's his publication in the Journal of Scientific Exploration Anomalies and Frontier Science the article's title is responses to Suddeth's quote James Leniger case reexamined and I just love it so First, before we get into James Leninger and his reincarnation story, you guys are probably like, what is reincarnation? Well, what happens with that? That's interesting. So thank you for asking. I will answer your questions. Let's first start by saying that in scenarios, well, reincarnation is, what well, if you guys don't know or don't believe in reincarnation, you at least have to incarnate, which is, you know, you got to get here. Your soul's got to get stuck in your, I, don't, I love when people call their bodies meat sacks because it just is so blatantly weird yeah it, it honestly makes me uncomfortable but in the way of like when you're a little kid and you're not allowed to say a swear word like it makes you feel dirty but also there's like it's factual it's like when spongebob has the swear words and all of them are like dolphin noises and stuff he's like i just like the way it rolls off my tongue sentence enhancers meat sack <laughs> <It's just weird. laughs> anyways it's when your soul goes into your meat sack you're welcome. So whether you believe that happens once or more than once is up to you, and that's fine. But 
Ooh, I don't remember what I was going to say. I got excited about the old SpongeBob videos where they just have We're dolphin talking noises. talking about what reincarnation is. Oh, yeah. It's just when your soul gets stuck into your body by whoever or whomever God you think does that. So it's a good time. Jellybean says hi. She's upstairs. So well, I asked the question during the YouTube video today. I guess when I was researching this, some people think that past life or past life regression is the same as reincarnation and then other people think that it's different but em and i are here to tell you that past lives and reincarnation are one facilitates the other so i don't know why people are saying it's, it's like the same asking what the difference is between a fingerprint and a finger that's true <laughs> yes they are different but they are also the same <laughs> They're, yeah, they're a part of the same thing. Anyways, but then also the other thing is somebody wanted to talk about epigenetics. And since we're talking about the University of Virginia School of Medicine and we're going to talk about their scientific publication, Clapback of Magnitude from Dr. Tucker, epigenetics, if you guys don't know, is the genetic inheritance of certain behaviors psychologically that are given to you genetically and that usually the form of mutations that happen from a predecessor or an ancestor so a really a lot of people have been doing a lot of studies about this so I guess for me specifically just to use myself as an example I have a aversion to not feeling like I'm equipped with enough physical things so so like food I will like ration food and I have no reason to ration food at all. Money, I worry about a lot. And I don't, I'm lucky enough, at least right now. I mean, not maybe a couple months ago, but right now to not have to entirely, and entirely she's worry like about that money. To prove what <laughs> what she's talking about. Um, And those things, I, I didn't have to worry about money or food when I was growing up. Thankfully, lucky enough. And I, there's no reason. There's no environmental reason why I should have such caution with food or physical objects because I didn't have things like that. I didn't have to worry about that as a child, blessingly enough. So why do I think that way? Epigenetics. I do indeed have ancestors that I am blood related to that lived during the, uh, what, Great Depression? Yeah, the Great Depression in America. So I believe that epigenetically, The trauma that my ancestors went through created genetic alterations in their germline cells, which are your sexual cells, so ovums and sperm, if you guys Mm -hmm. want a really cool science lesson. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And those mutations happened, and now here I am with anxiety and depression. You're welcome. From the Great Depression. Yeah, it was so traumatic to them that they literally had germline mutations, and now I have psychological things. So... There was a study, and I don't remember specifically where or who, I do know that there was a man and a woman scientist that did a scientific study with mice in a primate research facility, so I don't know why they did it on mice in a primate research facility, but that's besides the point. Long story short, they had a test group of mice, and one test group didn't have any sort of trauma associated with the smell of rosebuds. The other test group had a severe trauma That they learned to associate to the smell of rosebuds. Which is? The trauma or? What is the trauma with smelling rosebuds? I don't know how they traumatized mice, these poor, poor mice souls, into being traumatized by the smell of rose water. But they then bred those mice with control groups and non-control groups to create offspring. And the mice that were born from the predecessors with an aversion to rose water because of trauma also had an aversion to the smell of rosebuds not rose water rosebuds weird even though they had never experienced physically in their life trauma associated with rose water they just had the aversion and when they studied the cells the germline cells which are sperm and ovum they found in the sperm of the mice that had trauma actual genetic mutations that are linked to the aversion to rosebuds weird so that's epigenetics which is very very different from past lives and reincarnation so if you want to talk about physicality that's the physical aspect of cool things that happen biologically speaking but spiritually 
spiritual epigenetics could be like reincarnation and past lives. So there's a difference between physical and spiritual. Just understand that before we go forward. Because this is an educational comedy podcast. M, come in with a fart joke. Come on. Comedy. You're a fart head. It's my go-to. Push the wrong button. It was pretty good. I'm glad. Okay. We should just have a fart button. <laughs> and here is your break fart. <laughs> You're welcome, Jeez. fart joke. <clears throat> All right. So according to dr tucker 100 percent of all reincarnation cases that have been verified have been in children specifically children between the ages of two and five years of age with these children they will simultane- simultaneously exhibit behaviors such as phobias and preferences and these phobias and preferences are unusual within their physical family structure and are non-existent in their present or current day lives so these kids between the age of five are like i don't like for me i don't like um dark water that i can't see the bottom of and there's no reason for me to not like that so well can you look at your past lives and tell you why you do that i really like boats though i feel like i might have been like a person that was a man on a sea ship (laughs) Because I immediately was like, pirates. And they're like, no, you're not that fucking cool. (laughs) Pirates. You're not that cool. You were just some asshole fucking drowned on a ship. If you were that cool, you wouldn't be afraid of dark water. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a badass pirate. I just was probably some dude on a ship. (laughs) Maybe that's also why I like Newfoundlands. Oh, is that a thing? Maybe. I don't know. I just love them. (laughs) They look like cows and they're squishy. I was an orca whale and now I can't swim. (laughs) And I think it's because I don't know how to use my arms and legs to swim. And also, I don't like putting my face underwater because I was an orca whale. So I was able to, like, I don't know, hold my breath longer as an orca whale. Yeah. I don't know how that works because I'm not one anymore. Where's your blowhole? (laughs) Sorry. Where's your mom's blowhole? You would know. You did her last night. (laughs) How did you know? (laughs) God damn it. All right. So anyways... They don't have, there's no rhyme or reason why they have these specific behaviors or phobias because they're not actually existent in their current lives. And that they will also have very detailed descriptions and emotions associated with these things, the phobias, preferences, or statements that they have that are, quote, from a previous life's events. And they will literally say, from a a past life, I was this before I was now. So if you have any unexplained, I don't know, weird things that you do, let us know somewhere, maybe in a review, or if you're on YouTube, you can leave a comment and tell us if you think that you have specific past lives based upon your maybe phobias or things that you were drawn to. Oh yeah, in lots of different cultures, um, I mean, I don't have a, I mean, I'm American, so that's a culture, right? But I know like when you're, when you're in grade school or like middle school, the things that Americans ask each other is what are you? And when they ask you what are you, that means what like mutt of people from the world are you? So like I know I'm Irish, Italian, Welsh, and Czech. Oh, you're talking about nationalities? Yeah. Well, other people <laughs> don't know these things. Max, when I- Oh, you can't ask Max what his nationality is? No, because oh. they just look at you because they're German. Right, they're because like, they never moved to the Americas. Exactly, so it's not, a, it's not a thing in other countries. But when you're a kid and so, someone walks up to you and says, what are you? You know exactly what to say. If you're you're a German man and you're like, mm, let's go to France. And then you find a French lady. They don't, they're not like, these are my nationalities because my, my dad is a German man and my mom is a French lady. Is it hard to like move between countries? Probably. I mean, prob- I literally asked him, I was like, so what are you? Even though I knew that he was from Germany. He's like, what do you mean? And I was I'm like- German. Well, I'm Irish, Welsh, Italian, and Czech. And he's like, no, you're American. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm American. American. <laughs> American's not a thing we came here from, unless you're like a Native <clears throat> American was born here. But Ex- yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways. We came from the foreign people. Yeah. So. But in, adi- in addition to that, I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, the uh, birthmarks. That's another thing. When, yeah, if you have weird birthmarks, let us know what you think happened. Because apparently cause. they're associated with your past life, like where you died or had the most trauma. So do you have a birthmark? You asked me in the video. 
Yeah, the reason why I didn't say anything on YouTube is because all of my uh, traumas are from my last past life where I was kidnapped by men. Yeah. So uh, I have a birthmark in the middle of, like, in between my legs. Wow. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. And I also have one underneath my boobs. Interesting. So, not great places. And you can, uh, fill in the blanks <laughs> yeah i am had like a really cool badass like attache past life where she was rebellious and like did super cool secret spyage and stuff i was a i believe very religious american woman living in the 40s 50s and i died in a car crash while pregnant and i have a uh what is it a birthmark right in between my chest like in the middle of my chest right where my sternum is it's been there since i was little and i was like man Man. I think I made a joke to Vlad the Impaler when we were doing the video. Yeah. I, do I think that's valid? No, but is it funny? Yes. So we'll go yeah, with that. Yeah, because he uh, impales people from the butt up like a shish kebab. <laughs> Sorry. I know that that was weird, but like that, that's so, why he's called the Impaler. If you were one of his victims, you'd never know. What do you mean? Well, with your birthmark. Oh, that's what you mean. <laughs> I was like, the reason why he does that is so he can watch people slowly die. You're welcome. That's why he's so bad. But yeah. Vlad is the guy that uh, is the inspiration for Dracula. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to him the one day, or he was trying to talk to me. And I come up to live, and I was like, my head hurts. And she's like, are you talking to a, what was it? Nose Nosferatu? Because fucking SpongeBob is life. <laughs> I was like, well, the video that I was watching, he was brought up. But I'm actually watching a video about Dracula, but that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I was very confused because I was like, what the fuck do you look like? And he gave me a, a person, and I literally described what Vlad the Impaler looked like in person, but, yeah. you know. And then I was like, what the fuck does Nosferatu have to do with it? And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, so you got some cool reincarnation stories that you think that you have? Share us somewhere in the pages. Also birthmarks, because whatever, but whatever. All right, so many cases of these children between the ages of two and five are accurately linked to facts in the life and death of a deceased person. So the weird phobia preferences or emotions that they have associated with certain things, they link to a person that actually was alive at some point. They were like, that was me. I was that person, which is weird. This is where I start getting weird about everything because it freaks me out. So, Which is wild because he's a psychic medium and this happens to her on a daily basis. I've been having a lot of problems with my most current past life or most closely. You just have a hard time with things associated with you. Yeah, because I don't usually so. get information for myself. So when my past yeah. life is telling me fucking weird ass religious shit to do because I'm going to have a family soon, it gets me fucking weirded out. Because I mostly get stuff for myself because I don't talk to people about their things every day. I talk to my things around me. It's weird. So, yeah. But... Anyways, so some so. children have birthmarks and defects that correspond to other marks related to a past individual the child associates with. And these recollections of their past lives fade around the age of seven. However, sometimes they persist into adulthood. Which is interesting because people integrate with their personality at about seven or eight. And in the YouTube video, Liv says, no, they have a personality at two or three. I think it's three or five. I they thought that's when your personality have, is solidified. No, you have a mul multitude of different personalities, but once you reach the age of seven or eight is where you integrate with that personality. So it makes sense that you still have personalities from your past lives. Interesting. But I don't know. I would love to talk to Dr. Tucker. But anyways... Uh, it says that sometimes these recollections of their past lives persist into adulthood. However, I don't think I've had recollections, like cognitive recollections of my past life until like two, three years ago. And okay. I'm already in adulthood. So You're a psychic medium. Because okay. uh, <laughs> I get flashbacks of the things that happened to me in my last life. And I think they're for someone else because I don't understand why I'm seeing myself as something, someone else. Mm -hmm. But I personally think that if you're an adult and you're having like flashbacks of your past lives, your egotistical brain is going to be like, that wasn't me. That wasn't real. So that's why no one is doing studies on 
adults. Yeah, I guess so. I've always had enough like specific emotions associated with things and I've always felt very connected to like the 20s through the 40s so yeah but most people are going to be like well that's how you were raised something in your life made you do that Mm -hmm. so as an adult it's less astonishing that you have these associations well I was just thinking about this too because I'm thinking about what you just said which is you know, you have associations from people. And my grandmother on my mom's side adopted my mother when she was in her 30s, almost like early to mid 30s. So my mother's mother was very, very old. And my grandmother, my mother's grandmother, so my great grandmother was also very old. So I grew up with my mom who knew a lot of old things because her mom was old and her grandma was old because they were old when they were adopted. So that makes sense as to why I have an affiliation or like positive association with things that are old timey the 19th through the the 20s through the 50s but also i have a past life story about that which is weird that kind of goes with that yeah so (laughs) i don't know and maybe it's more spiritual than it is physical too because again the universe and spirit likes to have a sick twisted sense of satire so let's also start and talk about how There are certain types of statements that a child may make, which our Western culture may dismiss as fantasy. And I really like the fact that this scientist, Dr. Tucker, said our Western culture may dismiss as fantasy because there is a certain culture of people called the Druze, I believe, and they and their culture literally believe reincarnation as fact. That is how they view it. It is fact. So much so that at the age of three, if any of their youngsters in their community remember what their past life was, they will take them to wherever it was that they remember their past life was to like visit past family members, a grave, anything. So it's super cute. But there's a couple statements that children may make that we might dismiss. First of it is, you're not my mommy or daddy. Another one is, I have another mommy or daddy. Quote, when I was big, I used to have blue eyes, had a car, etc. That happened before I was in mommy's tummy. Weird as shit. I'm sorry, but that would freak me out so much. What's going to happen to you? Another one is I had a wife, husband, or children, or child. I used to, quote, some sort of activity, drive a truck, live in another town, etc. I died when or died this way. Weird. And I remember when some sort of place, event, or thing happened in their past life which is weird so let's first talk about the extras that i didn't put in the youtube video which is the story of the druze boy that was documented a while ago by some guy and then a german psychiatrist or psychologist put it in a book so there was a little boy who was born in the druze community who as we just learned take reincarnation as fact And he was born with a big, giant birthmark on his forehead. Like, bigger than Harry Potter. Who? A Druze boy. A Druze boy. Got you. So, the culture. So, he was born with this big, giant birthmark on his head, like Harry Potter, but cooler, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. And one day, he was like, yeah, I got hit in the head with an axe. Someone killed me. That's That's what this cool thing on the top of my head is. And they're like really (laughs) and he's like yeah i can tell you who killed me and they're like sure kiddo give it give it a good old college try so this kid who was three years old Mm -hmm. told adults that someone had killed him by an axe blow to the forehead and then when they told when he told the adults who had killed him they went there and confronted the suspect and i guess according to the story and the witnesses of the people that were there with the little boy the person that was accused like turned white but denied that he killed this little boy's past life and once the accused said that the little boy like i'm quite sure in like the most audacious three-year-old fashion because like they say things and they say things with such like simplicity like it just is what it is so it's not good or bad was like well okay well i'll show you where my body is so the little boy you told this story before. I don't know. I might have. I feel like you have. 
Maybe. Or this person has already told you this story because I've been thinking about it for yeah, like three hours. that's why it's hours. freaking me out. Oh, you're, you're really freaked out about a reincarnation story? Reincarnation stories aren't scary. This is freaked can't, out. Well, I can't remember if you told me or if I am having deja vu remembering you telling me it now. So It could be any of the two. <laughs> <laughs> so the little three-year-old leads the adults and authorities to the decomposing body of a man who has a head wound that matches the scar placement the little three-year-old has. Next to the body, not too far away, they find the murder weapon, which is indeed an axe, and they identify the body as a man who had gone missing four years earlier. So when they go to confront the suspected murderer slash accused man, he breaks down and says, yes, I did do it. That's fun. Did he get, I don't know, punished? I don't know. (laughs) So, uh. There you go. Super screws. He really reincarnated fast, my dude. Four years, right? I mean, I know that time doesn't really matter, and he could have, like, been gone for an eternity. But I think it's funny that he reincarnated and was like, dude, you suck. You hit me over the head with an axe. It's been four years, and now I'm three. So I incarnated (laughs) literally a year after it happened. Uh. (laughs) It's weird. But anyways, you just imagine a three-year-old little boy just, like, telling you with the three-year-old. I died by getting a good axe in my head. Eh. They say weird things. I'd say it probably happens a lot more often than you think. <clears throat> probably. Parents are just like, oh, they just say the darnish things. Uh-huh. So, and you then, know. Yeah. So, another story. I forget the man's name. I apologize. But... There was a man who was a retired fire chief or the act, I think he was retired, a retired fire chief of some county in the United States. And he visited the Battle of, or the place where the Battle of Antietam during the Civil War took place. And he like felt real fucking weird when he was visiting this place. He like had weird emotions. His body felt funny super super awkward so he said when he was visiting the place that the battle of antietam took place he in his mind heard or saw or whatever claire perceived the phrase not yet so he was like this is weird so he went home and was like obsessed with learning more about the battle of antietam mind you this guy's like retired so he's lived most of his life just literally being a fire chief doing whatever it is that this guy wanted to do with his life and then he goes there and is like, oh, no, I feel weird. I have to have this affix, like, aff- aff- I don't know, affixion, affixiation on this or whatever. So he had those words, not yet, in his mind when he was there. And while he was researching and learning things about the Battle of Antietam, he learned that the person, I forget what his name was, but, like, the commander guy in the military that led the assault for the battle of antietam was quoted saying because he saw it as the headline for this article he was reading it said not yet it was the quote that this commander person in the military said to hold back his troops before going into the battle of antietam so he's an adult yes well there's your adult story i guess so (laughs) It's just people don't get studied when you're an adult. Yeah, that's true. Also, um, we were talking about associations with people. You know, you're like, oh, well, maybe, you know, your parents were raised in an old-timey way, so that's why you like old-timey things, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he researched the commander, and he had birthmarks and marks on his body that correlated to wounds that the general had after or during and before the Battle of Antietam. Yeah. He also had a striking resemblance to his past life physically. Weird. Like, literally looked like him. You know, I like, look like my past lives? Yes. It's the nose. Really? The woodmaker guy? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, he looked like the general from the Battle of Antietam, and then... He was telling his fire his fire department crew buddies about it, you know, like his team at the fire department since he was the fire chief, just mm-hmm. like his past life was the commander of an army. 
the guys that he worked with at the fire station looked exactly like members of the regiment that oh, he commanded. Oh, so that's why he, they recognize people. Because I was like, I don't understand how you as a soul coming in would recognize people from your past life because they don't look the same anymore. But their entire lives, they all looked like the people that they are yeah. reincarnations of mm-hmm. in this life. And they didn't know that they were fucking cool and tight like they were in the last life. Well, I mean, it's probably like, I don't know, usual. That's like a normal thing that happens is you incarnate with the same people. It's weird. I mean, not really. (laughs) I think it's weird that we look like our incarnations. I really like things from the 20s through the 40s. My great grandmother was born in the beginning of the 1900s, like 1902. So when she was a young woman, she was, it was the 1920s. When she had my grandmother, it was like the 1930s. The 1930s through the 1940s is like the time. No, she would have my, yeah, she'd have my grandmother in the 1920s. Anyways. So your birth grandmother or your, I mean, your mom's birth grandmother? No, your, well, my mom's adopted. I know, that's why I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> well, I don't know anything about my birth maternal side because okay. they won't tell us anything because my maternal that's grandmother is like horrible. <laughs> I guess she's a wretched old lady. Um, So my adoptive my mother's adoptive grandmother and mother were born in the times that I really like which is interesting because I think my past life lived from the 1920s to the 40s or like the early 1900s like 1915 1914 to the 40s or 50s and that's when I died so my soul was like I had one psychic tell me the psychic that I took you to say see she told me that the because I was born almost like two months early that the reason I was born early is my soul now was like I don't know if I want to do this or like my I think my past soul was like I don't know if I want to do this I don't know if I'm ready and then my current soul was like yeet (laughs) because that's how my current soul is (laughs) she said that you it's like your soul didn't know whether or not they wanted to reincarnate which is why or incarnate which is why you were born so early because you were like I'm just gonna rip the band-aid off now we'll worry about the missing hair later Jesus yeah which is weird. I feel like my soul was like, okay, I guess I got to do this one because that's the closest to being able to be born in this time frame now when I need to learn certain lessons at a certain time, but also be able to be seen the things that my soul from my past life recognizes and have them be seen as normal and good. Yeah, because a lot of things that are happening now in the 2020s happened in 1920, like the pandemic, mm-hmm. which is weird. Yeah. Because my last soul died, like, in her 20s or 30s. I think 20s. Like, 23 she died. Or younger. I want to say, like, 23. But, yeah. She didn't get to learn the things that she did. So, doing it again with people that are new of a time when I was alive so I can talk about it. Same, but different. (laughs) Yeah. Anyways. So, on to the actual reincarnation case. Do you have anything to say about that? About what? Just me talking about myself. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) So, the reincarnation case that we are going to talk about is specifically that of James Leninger. James Leninger is an individual who is alive right now and probably close to M&I's age. So, Dr. Jim Tucker, the director of perceptual studies at the University School of the University of Virginia School of Medicine wrote a paper, a clapback scientifically, if you will, that is titled The Responses to Suddeth's James Leninger Case Reexamined. So he uh, put this dude in his place. So the past life's name, and I know this will get confusing. So James Leninger is the little boy in question that is being studied for his proclamation of having a past life. And his past life's name is James Huston, who has since been confirmed as a World War II pilot killed in action. So there are, scientifically speaking, since we talked about how we love science here on this podcast, if you are going to be doing a reincarnation study, according to Dr. Jim Tucker, there are two types of cases, and they're called, hilariously enough, court cases. So court stands for 
case of reincarnation, and there are two different types, A and B, and these are cases of evidence. So a court B case of evidence is going to be documentation recorded from the child before the past life is identified or linked to a previous human who actually existed. Now, type B of court cases of evidence is going to be that assuming A cases A cases are documentation recorded after a link is identified and or info is determined after the child could have learned the projected past life's info through ordinary means or impressions, presumably. So type A court cases for reincarnation documentation is things that are documented before the child could ever have any sort of environmental stimuli or association to things that they're saying. And it's also before the past life has been irrevocably identified as somebody who actually lived. Now, court case A of evidence for reincarnation studies is things that the child has said after the person that they say that they are has been identified, whether that be correctly like validated or not. And there is an association or a possibility of the child hearing the things that they're saying from their environment or other people. So if the child is like, I am great aunt Betty, and literally for the whole three years of their life, their family's like, I think that's the reincarnation of great aunt Betty. Don't you think? I think she makes a really good pie. She's only three. Like stuff like that. And then the kid's like, I'm great aunt Betty. You're like, "Mm, maybe that's that's a case A court documentation. So what makes James Leninger's reincarnation story so much different or to stand out from other reincarnation cases is that one, it's been studied in the most scientific way possible. But of all of the documentation, there are eight B cases, eight B court cases of documentation. So all things that little James Leninger said between the ages of two and five that were things that he just said outright by himself without prior knowledge or I don't know being what is it called associated with things that he could be that could be used to link to a past life he literally just said it no I don't know what is it cross contamination cross contamination of what of information he was never like given anything that could spur him to say this in his life Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. He doesn't have any bias. Correct. (laughs) Yeah. There's no things that could bias his little three to five year old mind. And these eight court case B documentations are, he signed his drawings, James three. He said that he flew off Natoma. He said that he flew a Corsair. He stated that he was shot down by Japanese. He said that he died at Iwo Jima. He was quoted saying, my airplane got shot down in the engine and it crashed in the water and that's how I died. Number seven of the court B cases is that he had nightmares of a plane crashing and sinking in the water. And number eight is that he said that Jack Larson was there. Now we're going to break down each of the court B cases and this is where it gets interesting because I think I was receiving information from his past life, which is James Hudson. So it's weird. I wrote it down. If it gets confusing, I'm sorry, because I was writing down things that spirits were saying into my head. It was a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) So the first thing is that little James signed his drawings, James three. So he had his little doodles as three-year-olds do, but he continued to sign all of his drawings as James three past the age of three, which is interesting. So I guess his parents were like, okay, well, why are you signing your pictures, James three, little James? Because you're not named after your dad and your dad isn't named after his dad. So there is no James three. Who are you talking about? And James Leninger's response was that he is the third James. And they're like, that's weird. So once they were able to finally figure out, because at this point they didn't know that James Leninger was uh, associated or was the past life reincarnation of James Hudson. They're just like, okay, you're James the third. That's interesting. They found out after identifying that his past life was in fact 
James Hudson, that James Hudson was a junior, making the current soul's incarnation the third James. It's so weird. Hmm. Like, how do you get a how do you get a child to explain that? I mean. The only thing that could have made it more precise is he literally was like, because my dad was my dad's name and I was named after my dad and my whole name was James Hudson. Yeah. That's literally the only thing that could make it more ridiculous. What? That a little kid knows that he's the third James? Yeah. Nah. But it makes sense in like a little kid structure because if you as a soul feel an inkling, like a clear cognizant understanding of that, your you were named James and your last name incarnation of James you were named after your dad or you were a junior then that just makes sense that you're it's just weird you're literally three kids don't know that mm. that's why it makes it cool that's why we're doing the hard hitting spoopy facts folks oh, gosh. so while I was writing these things down I have felt like this man was standing over my shoulder to my right and I was like all right let me put on my medium hat, hat, hat top, and a uh, crown. Crown, <laughs> yeah, it's a tiara crown. Oh, I'm a queen. I'm a king, actually, king of the jungle. Oh, actually, you're a towel. Oh God, my uh, membership to the Bed Bath and the Beyond has been revoked because of too many dad jokes. Anyways, um, towels. Also, no capes. So you could use a towel as a cape. Yeah. And then I get thrown out. That's the caveat. It's the satire that we're talking oh, about. Are the cape. Because you are a towel, sorry. <laughs> so I opened up my little medium hat and was like, all right, who's talking to me? And I believe that it was James Hudson because he's best and I'm a medium and I talk to souls. It's what I do. So I was like, okay, well, why James Hudson would you literally incarnate with the same name? That's hilarious. Like you could be someone else. Why don't you just pick a different name? And this is what he said. He said, if I'm going to reincarnate, may as well make it easy for everybody, myself included. And then he made a joke. He said, it's like sex. You don't want to say another person's name out loud. Em didn't get that, but I think it's funny. It was Yeah, I don't joke. get it because it's his own name. You're not saying his own name during, you know, the deed. Well, I know, but that's why he had the same name because he doesn't have to worry about remembering what his actual name is now, you know? No. Because if, if little James's name wasn't actually James and he's walking around signing everything James the third and telling people that he's the third James, they'd be like, this is weird. You know? I mean, I guess. It's like when you're it having sex. It just doesn't make sense with your sex analogy. Yes, it does. It's hilarious. I'm Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to have to put the foot down, me and James Hudson here, to explain the funniness of the joke. So if you're having horizontal dancing time with your partner of choice consensually of course and you mistakenly do not in a ecstatic verbal display of pleasure and affection say your partner's actual name but instead say like a past ex's name that is a big no-no because then that person's like fuck, I know that that person was your ex. Why are you screaming their name instead of mine because I'm the one doing the sexy time canoodling? Then they get offended. Mm -hmm. So to avoid such disaster, he's equating the fact of somebody only dating people with the name of Charlie because it doesn't matter how many exes you had named Charlie because you're always going to scream the right name during climax or whatever it is that you're having in vertical sexy time dancing. So you're horizontal. telling me that I should only date people with the same name so I don't get confused. If you are not smart enough to remember the person that you're having a sexual escapade with. Escapade. Yes. Yeah. So instead of a sexual escapade, we're having a spiritual escapade and it's called reincarnation. And instead of getting confused and shouting the wrong name during your existence, you say just my name's going to be James again. James 3. Well, that's the joke. It's hilarious. <laughs> I would res I would expect nothing less from a Navy pilot. <laughs> Did you know 77% of women who wear bladder weakness products experience intimate skin irritation? As if having incontinence wasn't stressful enough. But Tenna Intimate Pads have been gynecologist tested and do not cause skin irritation. Gentle on my intimate skin. I need to try Tenna Intimate Pads. Visit TennaSample.com for your free sample. Kind to skin protects like Tenna. Sure. 
sure, you've played scratch-offs, but you haven't played anything like our newest $20 Ohio Lottery scratch-offs. Here's Mega Cash with a $500 instant prize and minimum payouts of at least $30. And Magnificent Millions, which has over $58 million in total prizes. Both scratch-offs have a whopping $2 million top prize. So play Mega Cash at Magnificent Millions from the Ohio Lottery, and you may never look at scratch-offs the same way again. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. God. <laughs> so, um, I wrote that down, and I was like, interesting. And then in my own little notes, I put, this person is too smart. I'm getting chills. I feel like they're reading over my shoulder. And yes, I put, I'm typing about you because I felt like I was literally going crazy typing out these things that the soul I presume is talking to me. But I was like, no, this is just my own. I'm making jokes about sex. This is me. This I'm having a conversation with myself. And he literally had me write that James Lenigan, Lenigan, his new life, current life is turning into quote a fine young lad and that people didn't peg him his past life as someone that is smart uh he literally wrote i'm just gonna read it how i typed out what he was saying he said turn it into a fine young lad in relation to his current life and that in relation to him people didn't peg or mark me as a smart fellow but i read them books because he talked with like a weird Appalachian sort of southernish accent. So I was like, are you from the South? I'm confused. But I don't think it sounds from the South. It sounds like Midwest Appalachian kind of thing. Anyways, so now I was like, all right, well, okay, sex, funny sex joke aside, why did you come back as being named James? Like you literally could come back as anything else. Like, no, don't like, no joking. Take your funny half off. I want to know why. And he said, I did it to honor my pops. Once I made the decision to incarnate and he made me, because I was going to write reincarnate. And I know some people don't know this, but souls are the same as they were when they passed when I speak to them. And I wanted to write reincarnate, but for whatever reason that's specific to him as a person in a soul, he made me write incarnate. And I wrote, he prefers the term incarnate instead of reincarnate. Um, He said, I did it to honor my pops. Once I made the decision to incarnate, my pops was still living. Though, he said, I thought it'd be nice for him to know something special after he was gone. You know, with all the knowing. And I thought that was interesting because when I was reading this, I, like, didn't under Like, it's really important to people when they name their children juniors. Like, it's a sign of, like, pride and respect, I think. It's not just, I'm going to name my kid junior because I feel like I need to. Most of the time, it's, I want to have a junior because this is my son, you know? So he did that to honor his dad, to incarnate with the name again, because he feels that he didn't really get to use it as long as he should have when he was alive. So it's really cute. And then I was just kind of weirded out by that because he said, quote, you know, with all the knowing. And when he says that, he's referencing to how I understand that spirits, once they're past, know, see, hear, and feel everything. But I was confused about the idea of him being a soul and also now a new soul. But aren't they separate? Like, I don't understand that because when we talk about past lives, obviously we are our past lives because we're the same soul. But also we're different souls because that goes into like Em and I talk about higher selves and how your past lives are the building blocks of your higher self, which is more of like a larger spiritual being. So everybody has past lives, but you are and aren't at the same thing. So I was like separation, right? And he's like, well, yes, there is separation. And I said, okay, well, if there is separation, then you're not tied to James Lennon now. You are still James Huston, even though you're his past life. So you can be in heaven whenever it is that your dad passes, because obviously he's going to pass at some time. That's just how the world works. But like, I don't understand. You can just tell him that once he gets to heaven, right? No, see, hear, feel everything. He'll understand that. And he goes, he said, yes, and correct. Except it's more complicated than that. So I just left it alone. I was like, I don't fucking know what to talk about with a spiritual person. You know what I'm saying? It's like that shit that, you know, we're the young grasshopper that we won't understand. Well, yeah, they just, they show me, like, butterfly effect, timelines interconnecting. 
please explain because I'm confused. Well, I mean, I don't really understand it in general, but it's everything is happening now and everything is not happening now. And it deals with, they're showing me like a spider web of, hold on, they're showing me a, a scene, but I'm trying to remember where the scene came from. It's in there. I know it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Doctor Strange? Where Maybe. The Doctor Strange movie talks about the multiverse, mm -hmm. and they have this thing, spell type thing, because he's like a wizard or whatever, that deals with the uh, dark hold, and when you open this, you have the ability to transcend your consciousness into a, another timeline where you exist, and he's showing me how timelines work within the multiverse using this explanation of how it is visually represented in the movie. So when you open up this spell from the uh, the dark hold, it's kind of like a spider web of different locations of where you are, and they're not in a like line. They're in different parts of existence. So yes, he is technically on our linear plane of time past, but he's also living because there's a multiverse of a whole bunch of other different things happening. Does that make sense? With me f trying to explain it visually without a visual representation. You know those weird like pains that you get out of nowhere? <laughs> that like just fucking hurt really bad? Like in your eye, on your back, in your leg, your heart, whatever. You think that's one of your timelines dying? I don't know. Also... You were explaining that, and I was like, I need to really focus on this because if I don't, I'm not going to understand what she's saying. But he's talking, and James Huston's like, she's a smart one, ain't she? Oh, Because <laughs> oh, I just was like, all right, I'll fucking care. I'm just going to take what you say for fact, and I'm not going to think about it too much, you know? Well, Because that's I how I am, and I think that's how he is too. But yeah. you got that from that, and he's like, she's a smart one, ain't she? <laughs> Oh, God. That's hilarious. All right. Moving on. We have court B case number two, which is that James's past life, J little James, claimed that his past life, quote, flew off Natoma. So little James told his parents the name of the ship he flew off was named Natoma. Upon further, I don't know, digging, they were able to confirm that the USS Natoma Bay was a ship specifically an escort carrier stationed in the Pacific during World War II. And his father, Bruce, so little James's father currently, was able to identify this. And little James was 28 months old, so two and a half years plus two months when he said this. He literally was like, I flew off this ship and it was named Natoma. Are you freaking shizzitting me? <laughs> Not okay. Anyways, I then proceeded to write in red because red for me is mean and protagonisty. So anything wow. that Suddeth was quoted saying as malarkey from Dr. Tucker's original, I don't know, publication said that Suddeth was being a jack wagon. He said that um, the dates were wrong and that there was a two months earlier than mentioned timestamp. So when little james's father literally heard that his son said that he flew off the natoma he was like okay let me get out my detective glass and figure this out and when he did he printed off the information on his computer that said the uss natoma was this in the pacific during world war ii yada 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 and at the bottom of the page it had a timestamp of like i think it was august august of 2000 something like that and when he later reported it to scientists and the media for this whatever that they were doing for his son's reincarnation fun extravaganza whatever um he said that his son had said it in like september october or october november so suddeth is like but his dad said that it was during this time and dr tucker who actually spoke to the parents and gathered all of this research as a scientist was like I got to see the papers and his dad actually says correct when I was talking to the person that Suddeth decided to quote me on I was using things that I remembered out of my head so instead of using the timestamp 
at the bottom of the documents I printed proving that my son says his past life was on the USS Natoma that uh, I, you know, messed it up by two months because I was going off of memory. You are correct. It is time stamped with this date because that is when the child told me it and I went on my giant internet search hunt because 2000. Can we talk about the dial up his parents had to go through to get this information? Jesus Christ. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, they were dedicated to go through server speeds that slow. You may as well just go to the library. I mean, is he doing it? Are they doing it? Or is the parents the, were. The uh, doctor studying their child. Well, the doctor wasn't studying the child necessarily. The do- As far as I understand from okay. reading this, I'm not right. entirely sure. But I think that's weird. The way that I am understanding it is that Dr. Tucker was drawn to this case because of an ABC production or interview that was televised. Got you. And since this is what he does as a director of perceptional studies, he was like, hmm, maybe I should talk to this kid and his family to see what's going on. And he was able to amass all of this documentation supporting the things that happened. So he didn't just get the interviewing of the family after it had happened or while it was happening, but the stuff that they used to figure out all of this stuff so that he could make a paper on it. So he didn't do any of the research necessarily. He just wrote about what they found out. Yes. Interesting. I believe, but gotcha. I could be wrong. He could have done some sort of actual physical research with the family and the child, but I'm, I don't know. So anyways, oh, now we have number three, supporting evidence that little James claimed that he flew a Corsair. So he said... I flew this super cool airplane. And when the parents were talking to other people, reporters, stuff like that, the parents thought that little James said he was flying the Corsair when he died. But actually, that didn't happen to his real past life. What little James was remembered saying is that he was flying a Corsair when he, quote, crashed. He didn't say he was flying a Corsair when he died just when he crashed. It's that his parents interpreted the fact that when you crash, most people usually die, but they didn't know that James Hudson was was built different. Absolutely built different. <laughs> and he he just crashed. It was fine. I'm just going to go for a walk. It's a mere flesh wound. Anyways, so yep. according to his actual past life, James Hudson indeed flew a Corsair, which was a type of airplane, and he was a part of a specific squadron that tested these planes for the Navy because James Hudson was a part of the Navy. So it's interesting. And I was like, all right, well, this is weird because he popped into my head and I was like, okay, usually when people fucking crash things, they die. And he was like, this is when he did the, I'm not dead yet type thing, but in his own way, he said, you got to know those machines. These contraptions were spick and span, but had a slew of issues. Putting me and the boys in them just was just ain't wasn't right. Because he had to say that specifically. Putting me and the boys in them just ain't wasn't right. Sure, they was fun enough, but not enough for them issues. And I was like, that's weird. Why Why would you want to have a kid to like remember this, though? And he said, a man's ought to remember such a thing or a time. Could you imagine literally being like a test study to test these airplanes for a war that's happening in the Navy. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. They're just like, here, put this helmet on, kid. You'll be fine. <laughs> we just figured out how to make these metal things fly. You want to see? Yeah. So. Yeah, no. He crashed. I would not. He crashed, but uh, he didn't die. Interesting. And then it was later found out that, yes, he did indeed, like I said, flew a cor- uh, Corsair airplane for a test squadron of the Navy. When he did die, though, he was flying an FM-2 off Natoma Bay, which is the USS escort carrier, when he was killed. And this information is viewed as partially correct in the scientific community. And when I say this information, I'm referencing him saying that he flew a Corsair. They're going to say that it's partially correct because he did crash... But there's no record of him crashing. There's only record of his actual identified past life of James Huston as being in the squadron that tested the the Corsairs, not crashing. So they're like, it's partially correct as far as they can view it scientifically. So it's interesting because Suddeth comes back in his argument that in this paper, Tucker is defending. 
Suddeth says that James could have seen the airplane, a Corsair, at the flight museum that little James and his father visited frequently. But then, Tucker, who's not here, Dr. Tucker, who's not here for some fucking bullshit that Suddeth is serving in his stupidly worded, whatever, refute of his original paper, says that at the time of when little James was alive and would visit the museum with his father, there was never a Corsair airplane on display at all. So he also, Suddeth, argues that little James could have overheard the fact that a Corsair is an airplane from his environment or people surrounding him. So this is where, and I'm going to quote it because the T is so great. Like if you're going to insult someone, do it on their level and just do it so well that you just annihilate them. I love it. So I'm going to quote Jim Tucker the author of his paper, and he states, quote, Suddeth shows a fundamental misunderstanding here of what is important in these cases because the, one of the big reasons I wanted to cover this is because it actually is a scientifically documented and researched paper and case of reincarnation and just it gets me going. Anyways, end my own thing. I'm going back to the quote of Dr. Tucker. James doesn't get credit for the item whether or not he has heard of a Corsair. He could have been standing in front of a Corsair when he said he had flown one and still gotten credit. What makes the statement significant is that little James, he claimed he flew a Corsair in his past life. And in fact, the previous personality did indeed fly one. He just annihilates him. He's like, if you're going to try and re- like validate information you better do it and actually know all of the information yeah you're gonna say that me as a scientist a doctor a doctor a doctor a doctor professor patrick <laughs> doctor per- yes <laughs> brainwashed yep as a doctor you're going to tell me that this is the type of thing that wouldn't make my b type court case of information valid but what you sir mr Suddeth, don't understand is that What's important in understanding these cases from a scientific standpoint is this, this, and that, and here is why you're wrong. Have a nice day. Mic drop. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I just love it. It makes me excited. So now we're going on to number four. Number four is that, quote, the past life of, well, it's not quote, of (laughs) number four is that he was shot down by the Japanese, little James Leninger's past life. So James Hudson was indisputably shot down by the Japanese military. This is information from Jim Tucker in his paper that I'm doing a synopsis of. And what's hilarious is that Suddeth, in his invalidating menagerie of slop that he tried to throw at Tucker, states that being a pilot whose plane was shot down and crashed in the water are highly general claims and unsurprisingly correct. So he literally says, okay, Dr. Tucker, you say that James said that he was shot down by the Japanese. Well, most pilots whose plane were shot down and crashed in the water are probably going to be shot down by the Japanese. And Dr. Tucker comes back. I said he parlays with the statement of, in reality, a little less than half of the airplane losses during combat missions in the Pacific Ocean during World War II were due to enemy fire. And this is quoted from the Office of Statistical Control, 1945. So literally less than half of the casualties in the Pacific Ocean were due to enemy fire. So someone being shot down by someone that they're fighting. But thousands of pilots were killed in training accidents before they even went overseas. So a claim of being shot down by the Japanese is much more specific than Suddeth would say is unsurprisingly correct as a general claim. It's not general, it's specific, Suddeth. You heard the facts. Sorry. (laughs) I'm like getting really into it. I love it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's great. Anyways, so now we're going on to number five, which is that little James said that his past life died at Iwo Jima. So Bruce recalled when little James was around two and a half years old, he pointed to a picture of Iwo Jima and he said that That was where his plane was shot down. Now, in the invalidating trash from Suddeth, he refutes this statement, saying that Hudson actually dies at Chichizima, 
which is an island some 150 miles away from Iwo Jima. And he says that comparing these statements scientifically, I guess, he says that it would be as if someone said that they died at Gettysburg instead of Mount Pleasant or someone died in San Diego instead of Santa Monica because Chichizima is 150 miles away from Iwo Jima. So the fact that a two and a half year old claims that he died at Iwo Jima can be seen as incorrect because Iwo Jima is 150 miles away from where he actually was, which was Chichizima. Well, in the most superb fashion possible, Dr. Tucker has this to say, quote, and I need you to understand for context that during World War II, where James Hudson would be while he was serving the Navy is uh, a little bit different than present day. I mean, it isn't, but it is like boundary wise and the way things were set up was different. And this is what Dr. Tucker is talking about. He says, at this point in time, quote, Iwo Jima didn't have its own harbor. In order to defend it, the Japanese were forced to dock their transport ships at Chichizima, load their troops and supplies onto small ships, and move them to Iwo Jima, some 150 miles away. The Americans targeted this route as a part of their attack on Iwo Jima. And this is documented. So it's freaking awesome. I love it. So how does this tie into little James and his past life as James Hudson saying, I died at Iwo Jima? So, according to James Tucker, he quotes, pilots from Natoma Bay, which is the ship that Houston was on, took part in Iwo Jima operations. So, the whole entire assault on it and the things leading up to it. So, making 122 fli- 123 flights, the U.S. military led up to the invasion with 123 flights around Iwo Jima and Chichizima and 52 more on the day the assault began. In the weeks that the battle continued, this is a quote from Dr. Tucker, in the weeks that the battle continued, they also participated in strikes against the transport vessels at the harbor at Chichizima. It was during one of these strikes when James Houston was killed. His death is described in a confidential history of his squadron that was completed days after he was killed. It is included in a section of the official report entitled Iwo Jima Operation. I just love it. It's so great. (laughs) <laughs> like j- just mic drop after mic drop like you know when you don't want to like over explain yourself and then someone's like yeah well you, you forgot this detail and you're like yeah I didn't think I had to be that stupidly specific so that you and your simple mind could understand but he does it in such a nice way well yeah because he's incorrect he does it in a Virgo way well I- okay Virgo ways are usually very staunch and blunt because they just use information facts to give back to you to tell you that you're wrong I just love it I mean okay I, I the reason I love this so much and I, I hope people aren't being offended by me just like I, I don't care if you're offended if you're offended because I'm like this dude's a skeptic if, if you think that I'm like trying to like peg on skeptics dude if you listen if this is the first podcast episode you're listening to well, you, you need to understand that Emma and I gonna be a skeptic at least get your information right well if you're gonna be anything at least get your inf- information right it doesn't yeah. mean that you have to be a skeptic but you guys need to understand that Emma and I are our biggest skeptics so for me reading this and something that I'm like I don't know it, it's kind of like in the stuff that I do like I talk to souls and like <laughs> yeah, literally Dr. Tucker is doing what I do through a child who's subconsciously remembering what his last soul did in his current form and just like getting the facts i do that when i'm channeling souls but i'm not you know i'm not a child a child isn't talking to me about things that happened spiritually basically like the same thing kind of but like he's basically like being a medium but in in the science way and i'm just like oh why are you validating my existence wait who is dr tucker oh hey I mean, he's literally doing that. He's proving that someone lived with another soul before this boy. And this soul was this boy before he is who he is now. Yeah. Because when I talk to souls, they will literally show me things that happened in their past life to explain who they are to the person that I'm well, talking to. Mean, yes. I'm like, I don't understand how you're relating this to mediumship. No, he's validating it just like I do. Mm-hmm. But in a way that it's documented. Yeah. I love it. It makes me happy because I'm my own biggest skeptic. And I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm just crazy. 
you're funny yeah so like sometimes i'm suddeth and then other times i need someone like tucker to be like no you're fucking you are a medium get over it and those mm-hmm. are like my spirit guides and you mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> so i just ugh, i love it anyways okay so I wrote in pink, which is me and my own thoughts. I put in number three, which is I flew a Corsair. I was arguing with James in my head about him saying that he crashed a Corsair. And I was thinking I was crazy typing out his words. And I was like, this can't be right. I'm just, he's just saying planes have a lot of issues because planes can have a lot of issues, right? I don't know. And I asked him to clarify on the fact of like, okay, well, you crashed, right? Most people die when they crash. Like I'm little James's parents. I'm going, okay, I'm going to associate and just assume that you said crashed means that that's, that's how you died. You were flying a Corsair and that's how you died. And I'm like, I need you as a soul. If you're actually talking to me and saying things in this weird Appalachian accent, I need you to prove to me that I'm not crazy and I'm just not fabricating these answers from my mind. So like, give me some more information on the Crosshair and like, you know, you telling me that them things had a lot of issues and putting you and the boys in them was like, whatever and I literally didn't even realize it because I was trying to hurry up and like get the information done so I could come here and Em and I could make this podcast in a video and we talk about how he was in a squadron of people that were used to test the Corsairs and you only put people in things to test them when they have issues and I he told me that they had issues before I read that well I mean I'm pretty sure they had issues after testing well yeah i'm sure they did too but like i would assume that if you're in a in a plane they wouldn't have you fighting in it because that's what i was thinking and he's like them things had a lot of issues but he didn't tell me that he was a tester for it and i was like i need you to prove to me that this is right and he's like just keep reading bitch you're stupid (laughs) it's gonna answer your own questions and they fucking did (laughs) i'm stress sweating so much oh god (sighs) stress sweating but he made me feel clair, uh, cl- clair cognizantly like just keep reading and you're going to answer your own goddamn question and there it is which is weird so um and then i put also see below he snuck that in there while i was typing what i just read to you and it answers the question about his father i was pondering in number one because i just put answered my own questions lol and then i put it down there and continued writing so i think that's what you talked about with like the alternate dimensions or something <laughs> i don't know so <laughs> i didn't actually specify what it was that he answered my own question about and said see below and <laughs> so whatever there's just nothing below it literally just says he just answered my question lol because when you're talking to spirits things like that come in so fast that you can't like process it so you know that was me anyways <laughs> number six little james leninger saying my airplane got shot in the engine and it crashed in the water and that's how I died. <laughs> God, if someone, little tiny child said that I would lose my shit, I'd be like, mm-hmm, very nice. We're going to the doctors right now. Also here, I don't know, take this juice box. Something needs to medicate you. <laughs> no, I would just be like, you need to stop playing with planes, little Timmy. <laughs> little, little Timmy. <laughs> okay. So this one is interesting. Um, this statement was reported by little James' mother, Andrea, and Dr. Tucker says that this statement is important because it contains three court B items. One is that the airplane got shot in the engine. Two, that the airplane crashed in the water. And three, that is how James's past life died. He says, that's how I died. And Tucker, Dr. Tucker says that this is interesting because two of the three are easy, easy things to confirm since they're court B cases or descriptions identification details whatever but one of them is not so little james's father bruce posted on a chichizima website and heard from a crew member of one of the sergeant bay planes and eventually got the opportunity to speak with four world war ii veterans and i wrote this just so i would remember i put this is too perfectly written and quoted so here's another direct quote from dr tucker in relation to the third thing being able to be identified through personal eyewitness testimonies from four World War II veterans that were there on the day that James Houston Hudson died. So, quote, this was not a case of Bruce's questions stirring up vague memories. And when he means stirring up vague memories of vague memories from little James, this wasn't him questioning him and, you know, putting, making this case 
B court documentation into an A because one of the veterans, Jack Durham, had written an informal me- war memoir years before Bruce talked to him. In it, he wrote about Hudson, quote, one of the fighter pilots from the squadron assigned to give us cover was hit with a direct hit on the nose and all I could see were pieces falling into the sky, end quote. Another account, eyewitness account from World War II veteran is from John Richardson, who, when speaking, began sobbing as he told Bruce about that day. He talked about seeing Hudson's plane and said, quote, We were no more than 30 yards apart when the pilot deliberately turned his head and looked at me. I caught his eyes and we connected with each other. No sooner had we connected than his plane was hit in the engine and by what seemed to be a fairly large shell, end quote. He added, quote, I have lived with the pilot's face as his eyes fixed on me every day since it happened. I never knew who he was. I was the last guy to have seen him alive or saw him alive, end quote. So, Suddeth says, and this is still Dr. Tucker's quote, Suddeth says the testimony of the veterans, quote, happens to fit James's description of events, end quote. The italics in his, I don't know, in his statement of, quote, happens to fit James's description events. Tucker says, I don't know if he's trying to impunge the integrity of Bruce or that of the veterans, but in his effort to dismiss their eyewitness reports, he is acknowledging that they do in fact match James's statement that his plane got shot in the engine, which is the one of the three things that was a little hard to like pin down. Because, I mean, that's pretty specific to be like, it got shot in the engine and then it crashed in the water and then I died. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, plane crashing into the water. Cool story. That's probably how someone died. Also cool story. But what about the engine? They literally found four people. That's crazy. Well, yeah. Yeah. In the video, you were talking about um, seeing the same perspective as me. Yeah. I see some guy on the left-hand side that was looking at me, and then I get hit, and I smashed my head against the right side of the plane. But I can also hear the plane going down. And it's like this buzzing sound, but the buzzing sound, he himself, because he's a pilot, couldn't he couldn't hear very well. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you see it from Hudson's perspective and I see it from yeah, I the see veteran's it from perspective. The guy who died. So it's weird. So this is a at this point I wrote down spiritual spanking, war and past life issues. And that's why I was led to research this specific reincarnation. Because in the YouTube video, I talk about how I have this weird aversion to war and like the glorification or idealization of it in like present day, which is with all of the like video games and stuff, you know, Modern Warfare 3 and like World War 2 and World War 1 games. I don't even know their names. They just annoy me. <laughs> I just don't like it. And I think that's because my most recent past life experienced one of the two world wars and they're like that's not cool because you weren't actually there don't think it's cool because it's not you've never seen the light leave your friend's eyes you know yeah it's not something to like think is funny and play as video games anyways number seven little james had nightmares of plane crashing and sinking in the water so his father bruce described how james had nightmares of his plane crashing on fire and sinking and that he was unable to get out like he would wake up and scream in his nightmares that his plane crashed, was on fire, and he couldn't get out. And in real life, this was testified by eyewitness reports that Houston's plane crashed in the water, exploded, and burned, quickly sinking. And M, while she was feeling the last moments of Hudson, ex- explained what in addition to having your head get hit? Well, it's interesting because I... Uh... I don't usually get how people died, but the last couple of weeks I've been getting information about how people passed. And I talk about this in another video that I was watching this video and this girl felt like she was being suffocated and she died from um, being strangled to, to death. So this man in this plane, I could hear the plane going down and he's like semi-conscious after getting hit. And... um the right side of my head going down my neck and shoulders hurts and then I also feel the sensation of not being able to breathe like being suffocated again but I didn't mention it in the YouTube video because I just 
didn't realize that that was happening because it happened with the prior video that I was watching with this girl that was being suffocated. So I was like, this is just in my head. Yeah. And he told me when I was reading this that he drowned. And it's weird that M says that she can feel the right side of her head being hit because when I view his plane going down, the way he showed me was from the World War II veteran that he connected eyes with. I feel like I'm in a plane and I turn to my right to look at James Hudson and then I see it, like a fire come shooting out from the water and it hits the front of the engine on the left hand side. So if it hits on the left hand side, James would have hit his head on the right hand side before he went down. Yeah. And then he accommodated or associated that information with drowning. Yeah. And then I read the, pa- the part where he has nightmares of a plane crashing and sinking in the water. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't like know that you're sinking in the water unless you're alive still and then you drown. Yeah. Which he was is... like semi conscious when the plane was going down because the plane made a different sound when it was falling out of the sky. Yeah, than when you're in it. Mm-hmm. So it's weird. So at this point I was like, All right, James Hudson, sir, since you're over my shoulder helping me write this, research it and also give me a spiritual spanking about my own shit that's going on right now with past lives. Why are you giving a little kid nightmares? That's not cool. He's not. (laughs) And he isn't. He literally says uh, his response to my accusations or slight anger about making a child have nightmares is he goes, it's not a soul remembers a thing like that. So he clear cognizantly explains that it's like PTSD or involuntarily uh, having a physical trigger. And also it's like seeing a flashback because that happens to me. Mm hmm. I think it's also easier in the in the dream realm, too, because the dream realm is closer to the spirit realm. Right. Will you explain that so people understand it? Yes. Give me one second. My um, fiance is like, where does your mom live? <laughs> but anyways, this happens to me when I'm not asleep, which is interesting. But I'm also a psychic medium, so it's different. But the one day I got triggered, and like I said... My last past life had a lot of trauma. The memory that I was shown was this younger girl being trapped in this room and screaming and slamming her fist against the wall. Wait, you? Yes. Say that again? I was thinking about what you asked me to tell people. Oh. (laughs) So one of the flashbacks that I've seen from my past life is this little girl... She's probably like 10 to 13 that was smashing her fist against this wall that was she was locked in and screaming. That's weird. I always see your past life as older. I know, because I feel like I had trauma when I was a child, which led me to do the thing that you're talking about. Ah, got it. Yeah. To like become a super cool attache, to like get above everybody and always be ahead. However, the same thing happened in the end. I see myself as if I was myself driving down a street and like an old, like how the old cars in the 40s or 50s were like fucking huge. Yeah. Like just like literal lead sleds. It's uh like a like a burnt orange kind of color car. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving, and when I see myself, I don't see anything else besides I remember I like can hear the car crash, and I know that I'm pregnant because I'm wearing like a pink dress like 50 style dress and I'm driving somewhere and I'm probably like seven eight months pregnant because I'm huge my like my stomach is touching the steering wheel type thing almost uncomfortable and then after that I see myself standing from the outside of the car there's a fire hydrant and I'm in like a residential neighborhood and I see myself like my body what does your past life's face look like I know she has blonde hair you don't see her face either is she the one following you? Well, yeah, I think so. One of them well, has... Well, is there someone else? I don't know. I don't know. She has blonde hair, and I think she has green eyes. There's, like, something in the front seat. I don't know if I hit something. A steering wheel? Or if someone hit me. It's, like, a it's like a off-white color. It might be a steering wheel. Oh. But I see myself from outside of the car as if, like, oh, fuck, I died. Shit. <laughs> Like outside of your body? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> like I know I'm standing outside of the car on the sidewalk and oh. I see my car next to the sidewalk. And so it's it happened fucked. so quickly because so you d- didn't realize what happened really? Yeah, probably. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, drama. So, so why? Why is the dream realm? So why is it easier to dream about your past lives? 
Yeah, we talk about the placement of the dream realm within energetic existence. So realms can exist where there is not physicality. And we talk about in one of our podcasts and videos about dreaming. And we also talk about dragons and stuff. And that kind of has to go into the dream realm because there's a difference between your subconscious, which is going to be the dream realm, and your creative conscious, which is going to be different. But your subconscious is going to be the dream realm. The subconscious is a space energetically within your consciousness that is very closely related energetically to the existence of higher spiritual planes, such as the creative consciousness and spirit or heaven itself. So the difference between the creative conscious and the higher vibrational energy existing realms is that your subconscious is tied to your physical body and it's also tied to your soul. Think of it as like a playpen for your subconscious to do activities, I guess. Does that make sense? Right. So it's tethered to you. It's a place where your soul can... It's your own energy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. It's a play... The bounds of your own energy. It's a playpen for your own energy to fucking... It's a playpen. ...yeet yourself off of a cliff if you want to, because you're not going to die. But it's also, if you want to talk about it in a scientific way, a really good place for your brain to learn how to do things so that you don't do it in the real life. It's like, again, a playpen. Anyways... It's weird. So Suddeth challenges this nightmare of a plane crashing and sinking in the water. He challenges this, arguing that it is inconsistent with the actual James Hudson's death. And he says that his actual death is described in the Aircraft Action Report, AAR, and states that the impact of the crash is what killed Hudson in real life. But again... In the Virgo way that M says, Dr. Tucker comes back with a ferocious mic drop, smacking the facts up to Suddeth and says, in quotes, the AAR said Hudson's plane went, quote, crashing into the water, exploding and burning, end quote, and that it is, quote, believed that it would have been impossible to survive the crash and resulting explosion. Not only is the report surmising what happened, but dying in an explosion, burning plane, is clearly not the same as being killed on impact, which, end quote, is what Suddeth is challenging. He's like, no, no, no. The aircraft report says that he died on impact. No. The aircraft report, Suddeth, says that they're like, well, it it crashed and exploded. And uh, probably that's why he killed. But that never says that he was killed on impact, like you say, sir. Now... We're finally to number eight, which is what little Jack, what little James said, is that Jack Larson was there. So in an effort to better understand their child's interesting situation, little James's parents were like, hey, who else was present with you when you died in your your cool past life that you're talking about? And James said Jack Larson. So long story short, at the time, James, little James, was just under two and a half years old when he said the name Jack Larson. And after extensive research, they did indeed find that during the attack that James Hudson was involved in, it was discovered through past AAR reports that Jack Larson's plane was positioned right next to Hudson's on the day he was killed in an AAR diagram. So, total for this one case of reincarnation of James... Leganinson, Levinson. I'm not going to say his right his name right again. Jack? James. I don't know James? why I keep wanting to say Jack. It's James. Oh. James Leninger. In the super cool reincarnation case of James Leninger, that is a total of 10 B court case items that were made to identify that his reincarnation did indeed happen. And let's just recap that B court case items or documentations are the coolest and most validating whatever of facts that you can use to support the claims that the child is telling people. Unbiased, not infiltrated, whatever things. And it's so cool. And then I I told you guys that while I was listening to James Hutchinson talk, I was like, why do you sound like you have an accent? I need to know if this is true. So I wanted to know where he was born because I was like, this isn't a Southern accent. And he's like, you're right. And I was like, okay, well, Midwest southern accent which is something that is a real thing so he's like i don't know you're gonna have to look it up so i did 
And I found that James Hudson is James McCready Hudson Jr. And that he was from, at least when he enlisted in the Navy, from Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, which is great. And that he was born in Indiana. And if you go to both of those places, you get an, uh, what we call the Midwestern Southern accent. As I just so wonderfully dictated for you. Well. <laughs> he was born October 27, 22nd, 1923, and he died March 3rd, presumably 1945. He was in World War II, and he was a lieutenant junior grade pilot in the U.S. Navy. He was declared missing in action, and he was awarded post-mortem the Purple Heart, which is great. And I was like, what does he look like? And I was like, I don't know. I'll show you later. And she's like, yep, that's what I'm seeing. I was like, great. I'm glad that you're uh, you're seeing him too because he's funny. He makes sex jokes. <laughs> Did you yeah. guys like our story on reincarnation? Because I'm shook about it. And if you have any stories of your own, let us know somewhere. Yes, please. I need to know all of them. Oh, I heard another story. There was this girl and she was talking about how when she was little, her sister told her that while she was playing with her dolls, she stopped and told her, her older sister, that she remembered what she was like in her past life. And she was like, I used to be a woman and I had a son. She goes, but <clears throat> my husband was captured and everything was on fire. And I knew that my husband's knife wasn't going to be enough to save and keep my son and I safe from the people that were coming. So I stopped with my son because he was too small and couldn't run fast enough. And I wanted to leave a clue. So what I carved in between the trees with my son while we were trying to get away from the people that were killing everybody was Croatoa. What's that? That is the weird, mysterious etching in a tree on Roanoke Island, the colony of Roanoke. Ah. So, like yeah. <laughs> you know how people are like, oh, what's, what does Croatoa mean? Because literally there was a colony on Roanoke and everyone's like, they just, no, no one knows why they're gone. Everything was just gone. That was the only thing left. And she was just like, yeah, I, I got done playing for my dollies one day. And my sister's like, you told me this weird fucked up story. You remember this? She's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> Isn't that shit crazy? It's a fun time. Yeah, there was another kid. I think I already told you this one, though. But he, like, was watching a documentary about the, what is it called? The Titanic. And they were, like, showing a redone schematic of the boiler room or whatever. And he was like, no, that's wrong, mommy. That's actually on the other side. And when they like cross referenced it, the documentary or something was wrong and the boiler room actually was on the other side. And he was like, That's why I don't like water anymore. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so we're going to say thanks to all of our lovely patrons. If you want to become a patron, you can too. So here's the shout out Ian, Vanessa, McKenna, Shannon, Cindy, Kylie, Nev, Ronika, Trinity, Avery, Cass, Anthony, Violet, Peyton. Allie, Mac, Autumn, Thias, Jenny, Laurel, Brianna, Nate, Nate, Bradley, Sandy, Nas, Sherry, Christina, Anita, Katie, Charles, Holly, Krista, Flo, Malake. So, if you too want to become a patron, the link is in the show notes. We'll see you there. And uh, if you liked this podcast, make sure you follow, subscribe, do whatever you do for podcast things. Or you can also leave us a review if you uh, listen to us on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, it really will help if you leave a review and rate us. And if you leave well, a hilarious review, we'll read it in the next podcast. We mostly just want to hear your dad jokes <laughs> through reviews. So if you leave them, we'll talk about them in our podcast. Doesn't that sound great? Sounds great to me. Also, there's one other thing I wanted to say. So, if you guys don't know, we started a ghost hunting team. And I posted a thing to get names. And this guy really came up with them. I really like Wabbit season. <clears throat> the uh, names we have from this guy is Reality and Daily Truth, Detecting the Dead, Paranormal Truths, and Normal Paranormal. Let us know if you like any of those, because uh, I really like paranormal truths and detecting the dead. They're so boring. Well, we're not going to do rabbit season. Well, okay. The reason I think rabbit season is funny is because of the soul who was making jokes about how people think that they can quote unquote hunt the dead ghost hunters. It's hilarious. He's like, it's fucking rabbit season. It's funny. Well, Anyways, you ain't coming up with names. I did. It's in the ghost hunting video. I thought that... um. 
Something with like abnormals or something. I forget this what it was. It's not in the ghost hunting video because I'm editing it. It has to be. Okay, it's then not. no one was recording me, which is a problem. <laughs> it's not. We need to get the ghost hunting team to understand and that I am a Leo. You don't have the memory to actually remember anything you say. <laughs> that I am a Leo and need to be filmed at all points in time because one, I'm fabulous. Two, I'm fabulous. Three, I'm important. And four, I will never remember what I need to say and it's all important so people need to know it. If I'm not going to remember it. Anyways, if you have names, let us know. But uh, I like detecting the dead. You Ugh. came up with some good names. She's being very rude about it. I'm not being rude. I'm just telling you I don't like your ideas. You can also tell me that you don't like mine. I don't have any ideas. So you also can't tell me that you don't like the ideas that I don't have. So stick it to you. I'll come up with something. Also, detecting the dead is like DD. It makes me think about dicks. The big D. Sorry. <laughs> you ever watched? It's the, what is it called? Um, What's the card game? Cards Against Humanity or? Humanity, humanity. I'm raining on your parade, so you're just not going to say anything. That's. I fine. wonder how long I can stare at her while she continues to just. I mean, put your foot in her mouth. <laughs> I don't like them. It's just that. So, I think they're all boring. Very, very white toast that's unbuttered. I'll continue doing it. You can't shame me into not liking or liking his things. Well, I can't shame you into ending the podcast either. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The laptop is next to me. It could go on forever. How long do you guys have an eternity? Well, I mean, she's the one that has to edit it, so. Dude, and I'm not going to be able to because I don't even know how to stop it. And we're your minus sidekicks. You forgot to put the before the thing. I uh, know. Okay. Because that was chaos. It takes a lot of ingredients to fix or build a car. Like cooking, but without the frozen dinner, easy way out. eBay Motors has 122 million parts. It's always the right fitment, so you can follow any recipe to a T. Whether it's a vintage Italian coupe that's classic like grandma's meatballs, or a German luxury car that's as complicated as Oma's Rouladen. To cook up something great in the garage, use the eBay Motors app or visit ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. <gasps> Only one sale away from the Shopify 1000 Club. Is that a thing? Wow, Mom. Have a cookie. I'll take one. <laughs> Dad. These are delicious. You need to sell them. Mm -mm, you should. Mom. No, seriously. Let's set you up on Shopify. It's easy. I always knew you would build your own business. Guys. Yum. Yum. Okay, if Mom can do it, then why not? Number 1000. Start selling today with Shopify for free. Sell online, in person, and anywhere else your future holds. And manage it all from a single place. No design or coding experience necessary. It's why every minute of every day, something amazing happens. A new seller makes their first sale with Shopify. Plus, with on-demand business courses and 24-7 support, Shopify is with you every step of the way. So, when you're ready to bring your idea to life, build it on Shopify, the commerce platform powering millions of ideas around the world. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a free 14-day trial at shopify.com slash free 22 go to shopify.com slash free 22 and start selling today shopify.com slash free 22